What's good, everybody? Cozy Boy Don back again with another video. And today we got an episode of the Cozy Corner, man. You see what's going on in the Cozy Corner. Got the plant here. Space Jam MJ in the back. Real deal. Kobe 81 point game. Rest in peace to Mamba always. Mamba mentality always, you know. And like I said, we're in the Cozy Corner. Today we're going to be talking a lot of things. There's been a lot of things to recap since I did the Cozy Corner. You got. It. First, I'm going to start with free agency. That was that was a thing. <laughs> that was a thing. Free agency was a thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the Olympics. Olympic hoops. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. And finally, we're going to hit Summer League, man. It's been a lot of, just a lot of hoops. A lot of things to talk about. So kick back, relax, and get cozy with your boy Don, man. We finna go into the cozy corner. You see how we move. Other than the things on the wall, we got my friend here. My friend here. And we got the french fries over here. So if you want something to eat, you snack on that. <laughs> but other than that, like I said, man, get cozy with your boy Don, man. Let's get it. All right, man. First up, we got free agency. Free agency was, like I said, it was a thing. Um, it happened fast. Monday was boom, in and out. Really in and out. Everything else was just a blur but for real for real free agency started on draft night <laughs> started on draft night so before the draft even started we had a big deal going on for just with implications on contending teams because most of the things that happened in free agency weren't things for like contending teams like the big deals they weren't really for contending teams so we saw with russell westbrook being traded from the washington wizards to the los angeles lakers for Carl Kuzma, <laughs> Carl Kuzma, <laughs> Montrez Harrell, KCP, and first round pick. Um, what do I think about the trade? My thoughts for the Lakers side of the trade are reserved until I see them play. Because in theory, it's a good trade because the Lakers are in a LeBron window. <laughs> They're not in a rebuilding or your typical window where you're going to try to keep those kind of core guys around, but you're more so going to want that immediate like star power because your window is so much shorter with LeBron being 37, going into probably the last three years of his career, and he was hurt for the first time. So you're going to need guys to help, help him carry the load. You already got AD, but AD really can't stay healthy. That's going to be a thing. If the Lakers want to win, AD is going to have to be healthy. And Russell Westbrook, man, they did some other things in free agency, but just strictly this trade, I am high on it for the Wizards, and I'm still a bit indifferent about it for the Lakers just because I want to see them play first. The Wizards, bravo, 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 because I watched some Wizards games from the area. I watched some Wizards games, and outside of probably five guys, six maybe, seven the rest of the team was not that good. They weren't deep at all. So, outside of your starting five, which is Russell Westbrook, Bradley Bill, um, was Ralph Nato starting? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, I'm just going to name the guys. Outside of Russ, Bill, Rui Hachimura, Denny Avdia, Thomas Bryant, Daniel Gafford. Am I missing anybody else? I don't think I'm missing anybody else. Six people. Outside of that, fall off a cliff with the rest. And to be able to add depth like that, it could be because from what I'm what I'm noticing, this is how I feel about it. I don't they're not trading Bradley Bill right now. Not gonna happen right now. Not happening at all right now. So trying to retool, gear up for another year, trying to build around Brad and offer him an extension. So those kind of players, you're going to need to be deeper because if you're deeper, you're better. You're not just putting all your weight on Brad was tired. Russ was hurt sometimes. And it was just a lot on both of them. So for them to turn one player and a pick into four players, was just four NBA caliber players is just amazing, or at least three of them. Um, that was before the draft. And then we had the draft. If you want to know what I think about the draft, card, gonna link it you know what i'm saying i might have been pointing in the wrong direction but it don't matter um i did a draft recap so if you're looking for draft recap 
It's gonna be in the card. I'm gonna link it down below. So that was that was, draft night was fun. I had a lot of fun covering some of those guys, and I plan on doing more of that. Might do some summer league observations or like some summer league film breakdowns on guys and stuff like that. So that's something to look forward to for me. Um, and then the start of free agency. Free agency started. Boom, bang. Lonzo Ball to the Bulls from the Pelicans. Gave up Tomas Sadaransky. Um, who else did they give up? Why am I blanking on this now? They gave up Tomas Sadaransky, Garrett Temple, and I think a second round pick to the to the Pelicans for Lonzo Ball. And I like it for the Bulls. I like it for the Pelicans too. Just because from from my standpoint, they didn't want Lonzo Ball. So it's better to get something for him than nothing. And Tomas Sadaransky is a quality guard. He's not amazing. He's not gonna blow your socks off, but he's a steady quality guard. So I think they got a good thing from that. They got a vet in Garrett Temple. And yeah, man. That wasn't that wasn't the worst thing ever for the Pelicans. Some people don't like it, some people do like it. It's cool. <laughs> uh and another thing. I don't know how to feel about Lonzo Ball, bro. Like, I like Lonzo. I'm not a Lonzo hater. I'm not a ball hater by no means at all. I like what they're doing. I like LeVar, Jello, Melo, Lonzo. I like all of them. But I'm not really sure of, you know, because Zoe is not, to me at least, he's not a creating bucket getter. Like, with Zach Levine on your team, you're going to want him to have the ball in his hands because he's a threat to do to score from anywhere on the floor. So if you want the ball to be in Zach Levine's hands, you're just putting Lonzo in the corner. And I don't know how to feel about that yet. To be honest with you, when things like this happen, I really don't have like a too strong of an opinion on it until I see guys play. You know, I can I can visualize it sometimes, but when it's like something that I really think is like a like a hand in glove fit, but I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel about that just yet. But just, just like based off the talent-wise and name, name game, I like it. Um, secondly, the Heat. Hey, man. First, first, you trade for Kyle Lowry. You know what I'm saying? Kyle Lowry is culture. He is Heat culture. Kyle Lowry is Heat culture. There's no way around it. There's no second, third words to say. Kyle Lowry is Heat culture, bro. Like. Hard working, hard nose, always gonna give a hundred percent effort. Gonna do what he needs to do, you know what I'm saying? Play hard defense, just be a tough guy, cause that's what the Heat are, just a bunch of tough dudes. And resigned, they resigned, um, they resigned Duncan Robinson. You know, like Duncan Robinson, he's a shooter, creative shooter. Just got this a shooter, bro. You need shooting, and I'm happy for him. His journey to from D3 basketball, prep school basketball, to D3 to Michigan to not playing at Michigan to finally getting a chance to the G League, D League, and then finally making it, putting in the work, and he's rewarded with his hard work. That's what hard work is about. So you get get rewarded for your hard work. So I appreciate that. That's something that's really really good for him. They signed P.J. Tucker as well, so I like what P.J. Tucker did too. So, hey, man, the Heat looking nice. They retooling. They're trying to say last year wasn't a fluke. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to say they weren't They weren't bubble thugs or whatever Charles Barkley said. They weren't the bubble gangsters or whatever, bro. It's just basketball. Uh, basketball is going to be basketball no matter where it is. There are variables to it because there's nuance to everything. So I hope everybody learns that there's nuance to everything. And we can just talk about hoops that way because it's like just because it was in a different place don't mean it's not basketball because people were treating it like it wasn't basketball but that's a whole nother thing sign made the biggest splash i think in free agency was the lakers they got russell westbrook like i stated a little bit earlier and they were able to go out and sign some guys that were some veterans that were really really good for the for the minimum and they got a couple young guys that were for the minimum so i'm gonna start off with Melo. they got carmelo anthony Banana Boat Crew, you know, back together, Banana Boat Crew. Um, they got Carmelo, they got Kendrick Nunn, Malik Monk, Wayne Ellington, Trevor Ariza. Um, probably missing somebody else, but that's just a chunk of the guys that they got for the minimum, bro. They've re signed THT, 
Um, I don't, they retain Jared Dudley. I'm pretty sure they're going to retain Jared Dudley just because he's a good vet. And Lakers gearing up for that title run, man. They they want to get their get back from, from from a couple weeks ago, about a month or so ago, trying to get their get back. You know what I'm saying? LeBron, AD, you know what I'm saying? Russ, Melo, Trevor Ariza, Wayne Ellington. It don't really matter what's going on because we're going to see how it works on the court, man. Like, I don't know how to I don't know how to feel about it, you know, because they did the thing. They made some nice signings. They got deeper. They lost Alex Caruso to the Bulls, but I mean some people are okay with them losing Caruso, some people aren't. I don't really care <laughs> because like I'm not saying that Alex Caruso isn't irreplaceable, but Alex Caruso is not your make or break player. You get what I'm saying? He's not a guy like a he's not like a Rondo or somebody like that. Um, so yeah, Lakers did their thing, and then we got I gotta go back to the Bulls. Go back to the Bulls. The Bulls got DeMar DeRozan. Weird, but hey, um, a lot of slashing. Not a lot of shooting, but vibes maybe. I don't know. Vibes. Not a lot of defense either, but vibes possibly. They had to give up Daddy as young, so they got Patrick Williams though. Patrick Williams. <laughs> Patrick Williams been hooping. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Patrick Williams been hooping. <laughs> um, the Nets. Patty Mills, they lost Jeff Green, but they got James Johnson. We signed a KD, Kyrie, and and uh, James Harden, and they're gonna work on that cheap labor, that cheap labor like I talked about in the draft video. And Cam Thomas, Dayron Sharp, Kessler Edwards, a bunch of guys like that. They got Blake Griffin back too, so just working cheap labor around their three, their three stars, and it seems like the paths are gonna collide. Hopefully, we praying. Hopefully, hopefully these paths collide where we get the Nets against the Lakers. Full strength, full strength, head on collusion, collision, not collusion, not collusion, <laughs> head on collision for the title, man. We hoping for that because that's what I had going into last year before the injuries messed everything up. Um, yeah, dude. Um, what else happened in free agency? The Wizards. The Wizards, Wizards, Wizards. Um, I really like what the Wizards did. They really had an underrated, they had an underrated seat, that underrated offseason for real, for real. Because just based off the fact that they didn't have the amount of NBA caliber talent that they have now, just by trading one player, right? They traded one player, got three guys back, a draft prospect that I'm high on, Isaiah Todd. Sucks that he couldn't play in the summer league. I don't know if he, they're gonna play. Him, Kyrie Walker. I was looking forward to seeing Kyrie Walker because he didn't play college hoops. He was training, doing the Mitchell Robinson kind of thing. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what the Wizards look like because they got Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie is one of my favorite NBA characters. <laughs> yes, I say characters because he is a character. That dude is he's not normal. And that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, they got Spencer Dinwiddie. They added four... NBA veterans and hey man we're just gonna be in that mix the East got a lot better they're gonna be in that mix the mix in the East where you got the Bucks the Nets Heat the 76ers the Hawks the, the, the Bulls the Wizards Hornets Pacers it's it's deep they deep the East is deep the East is deep they're gonna be fun to watch hopefully we won't get a lot of injuries like we did last year because the season won't be crammed into a goddamn train like it was this past year and at a certain point in time it felt like the season was just being forced along you get what i'm saying it was just forcing that the season to go along and that wasn't fun that wasn't i mean at a certain at the beginning it wasn't really fun because you didn't have the crowds and you didn't have you just didn't have a lot you know what i'm saying it was just just in an empty gym but as the season went along it got a little bit better and then we hit a wall usually you hit like the wall before all-star break and then you ramp up into into the uh the final push before the playoffs but it felt like we did hit that wall like before that we got back into it and then we hit another wall again after all-star break and we're in may and we're still like in a regular season it's like what are we doing 
why is this still has to feel like the dog days of the NBA season. But hopefully we do that. That's why we went through this so we can get back on track for this past for this upcoming year. The Hornets got Kelly Oubre. I do know that. Um, the Jazz got got Rudy Gay. The Nuggets got uh, Jeff Green. Hopefully he fills a Jeremy Grant role. I still think they should have paid that man. Pay that man, Jeremy Grant. Pay him. You should have paid him. He was so key for that team, but whatever. Um, they had to let somebody go. But just my thoughts. Just the thoughts of the Don. Yeah, man, that's all I got on free agency. Um, yeah, so let's go into the next topic. We're going to talk Olympic hoops. The Olympics were fun. First thoughts before we even get to to who won the gold medal because we all know who won the gold medal, but Luca, Luca, my boy, what's up, my boy? What's up, Luca? Luca went crazy. He went stupid. First game, he had 48 points. They play Argentina, bullied him, bullied, bully, bullied him. 48 of them, 48, 48 of them things. Next game, what he had? 30? I don't remember what he had, but he hooped his little tail off. They went 3-0 and in the preliminaries. Um, unfortunately, they lost to France in the uh, quarterfinal, not the quarterfinal, the semifinal, and they lost to Australia in the uh, third place game, so they didn't medal, but still, that run. Luca, baby. Luca the Don. Luca the Don, you know? He did his thing. He's still, bro, like I told you before in the Luca video, the Luca video went crazy. Shout out to everybody that watched the Luca video. I need y'all to watch some of these other videos too. Um, Luca went crazy, bro. He just added to his resume. And like I said before, I don't care what nobody say. He might be 22. This dude has a Hall of Fame resume at 22 years old. I'm not saying he's the best player ever. Not saying that. But he won two MVPs, two championships, and two of the best professional leagues in the world. Not the top two, but two. ACB, EuroLeague, Championship, Final Four MVP, regular season MVP in the um, EuroLeague, and in Liga ACB. Come on now. Like, at, at 18, 19 years old. Come on now. Stop it. Rookie of the year. Stop it. Just stop it. Average a damn near 30 points a game. Stop it, bro. Chill. Chill. The NBA is hard. But, hey, man, only time is going to tell. And just laying out the facts in front of you. And we're going to be excited to see what goes forward with Luka. So, yeah. Olympics had Australia. Australia, congratulations to Australia for meddling for the first time in the Olympics. Patty Mills. FIBA Patty. FIBA Patty. Patty Mills went stupid. He had 42 in the third place game to get that bronze medal. Shout out to them. Shout out to all the Aussies. Praying for you, Aaron Baines. Hopefully you get healthy. Um, he had a neck injury. Don't know if he's going to be out for the entire season, but it didn't look too good. But praying for you, Aaron Baines. Hoping he gets better. Um, Josh Green got a, got a bronze medal. Joe Ingles, who else is on that team? Jock Landell, who signed with the, the Spurs. Um... Josh Giddy was going to be on that team, but he got scratched late. Matisse Thibault, shout out to you, Matisse. Playing good defense, shout out to you. Um, Spain. Spain was in, in their last one, probably, of that core that they had with Pau Gasol, Marc Gasol, Sergio Yule, uh, Rudy Fernandez, Ricky Rubio. Just a lot of those guys. I mean, Ricky Rubio is probably going to play another one just because he's been playing since he was so young. He's only, what, 30 years old. He's probably going to play in another, another Olympics, but it's probably going to be the last one for Powell and Mark. And, yeah. Salute to Luis Scola. He played in his, his last Olympics. He's, what, 42, 43 years old. Um, long career. Long, long career. Played in the NBA for, for a handful of years. Played overseas for a long time. And shout out to you, Louis Scola. You are a dude, bro. And finally, the gold medal game. USA and France. USA and France. Let's talk about Team USA. Because there's been a lot been said throughout the Olympics of what happened with Team USA, why they lost the exhibition game to um, 
to Australia, and why they lost to Nigeria, and why they lost to France in their preliminary round game. Bro, I, I, I'm going to say this again because people ask me before. I'm going to say this. The team that they had was thrown together really last minute because they still had guys that were playing in the finals when they were playing before they left they didn't play all together until the first game they got in japan so like what do you expect every other team that they played has been playing together for at least more it's been at least a year bro at least a year if you look at it all the teams are qualified argentina Argentina, they got Faku, they got Luis Scola, they got guys like that that have been playing together for a long time. Rich basketball, like rich basketball nations. You know, you got Slovenia. Slovenia is a country of two million people. If you think them them boys ain't united, bro, then what you think? You know, and you got Spain. Spain has a they have a pedigree when it comes to the world game. Spain has a pain has a pedigree when it comes to the world game. France. France has a pedigree when it comes to the world game. Like Australia. Like all of these teams have played together for more time than that Team USA team. And yes, they are you Team USA was the most talented team. That's why they won the gold medal. But just like bro, like they're not unbeatable anymore. You know? But in a one game scenario, I'm gonna bet on Team USA, but you can't act like the world just still is where they were in 1992. And yes, the world has caught up, but we're still on top. The USA is still on top, and we're still attempting to get better. But the world has gotten better, bro. Like you can't just say that they haven't, because the way that America has impacted the world when it comes to basketball as a whole, since since the Dream Team, since before I was even born, bro. Like that team had an impact on the entire world, like the entire world. So. Congratulations to Team USA, France, um, Australia for meddling in men's tournament. Women's team, shout out to the women's team. Shout out, shout out to Diane Taurasi, um, Sue Bird, Skylar Digger Smith, Tina Charles, Brittany Griner, Asia Wilson. Shout out to all y'all, man. Shout out to Chelsea Gray. Um, I'm blanking on names at this point now. Chelsea Gray, um, Sylvia Files. Um, yeah, shout out to y'all. Y'all, y'all dominant. Dominant, y'all dominant, man. And before the Olympics, I was watching some WNBA, so I continue. I'm gonna continue to watch some WNBA once the break is over with. So, yeah, man. Shout out to the women's national team doing their thing, kicking ass. <laughs> they kicking ass, man. Uh, and finally, man, summer league. Summer league is here. It's cracking. We've been what weekend now from since since um salt lake city salt lake city all the way to sacramento all the way to vegas um salt lake city has always been boring to me spurs were there the grizzlies were there zaire didn't play in um salt lake city so i didn't watch too much of the, the grizzlies there i seen desmond bain is a grown man desmond bain is a grown man out there david tillman is a grown man out there they shouldn't be playing summer league <laughs> they shouldn't be playing summer league um who else impressed in in, in uh, Salt Lake City? Josh Primo. Primo, he didn't have a good first game. Um, but the last game they played before they went to Vegas, Josh Primo did his thug. This is what he had 17. He had he showed why he was a lottery pick, man. 18 years old. 19, I think 18 or 19. And Tidbit, I didn't know. Excuse me. I didn't know he was Canadian. Did not know that. Did not know Josh Primo was Canadian. I found that out today. <laughs> I found that out today. So salute to the Canadians, man. They got some hoopers. Um, yeah, man. Josh Primo impressed me, bro. He had some boogie, hit some hit some tough shots, aggressive, not scared, and he's got a he's got a nice frame. He's like six five. If you think if you just look at his face, you think he's like six one, six foot, but he's six five, bro. He's solid. Uh, like I said in the draft video, playing the NBA style with Alabama with Nate Oates. And they got the ball up. They had the pace going. So it's going to be interesting to see how he fits into the Spurs system with them low-key going into a rebuild. Not really a rebuild because they got young players, but they're just going younger. They're prioritizing developing their talent now. Now that they don't have DeMar DeRozan anymore, just guys like um, DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker IV, um Devin White. They got a lot of guards. <laughs> Devin White. Um, like I said, Josh Primo, Devin Vassell. Uh, no, they don't have Samanch no more, do they? 
nah, Yaka Poido, uh, just just a lot of young guys. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they're coming, what they're gonna come like next season. Um, and then we went, we got the sack, we got the sack. Uh, the Heat culture their way through Sacramento. <laughs> the Heat are like just cultured. Their the Heat culture is just crazy. Uh, they cultured their way through Sacramento. Uh, who else? Who else? Davion Mitchell impressed in Sacramento in his first game. I don't think he played in the second game because he pulled a hammy or something like that in the first game. But Davion Mitchell got out there. He got after it. He did his thing. Uh, doing Davion Mitchell things. And like I said in the draft video, I don't want to misconstrue what I meant by saying that the pick for the Kings was not my favorite pick. I still stand beside that that was not my favorite pick. But I... Not well, for one, I'm not a fan of the, the Sacramento Kings. I do like De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, yeah, I like those guys. Um, but in two, don't run the Kings, so yeah, the decision was their decision. They went with another guard for whatever reason, they went for another guard. I don't, I don't know, high character guy. Davion Mitchell is a high character guy, he is a guy that plays intense defense, slides them puppies so, slides them puppies so well, bro. Slides those puppies so well. Um, he did that. Um, man, Sacramento, hey man, whatever. Um, he impressed. We got to see Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody with the Warriors for the first time in their second game when they played against the Heat. Um, Omer Yavertson, Heat, Omer Yavertson, shout out to you, bro. You hooped, you got yourself a contract, my boy. Um, and they, they have all undrafted players on the summer league team. Max Struess, he just signed a contract, and he just gamed somebody today. Ugh, you need to go look at that. You need to go watch that. That he just, ugh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Double overtime. Um, it was double overtime. Sudden death, dude. What I'm talking about off the tip, off the tip. Come down, walk down, boom, right in your mother. Right in your face, game. You know what I'm saying? Right in your face for game. You feel me? That was that was an epic. That was epic. <laughs> um, but they got a lot of guys that I like on that team that probably aren't gonna play in the NBA. Uh, Javante Smart from LSU. They got uh, Jero from Houston. I'm blanking on his first name. Jero from Houston. They got. Um, I was gonna say Lejero Vic. That's not Lejero Vic. What's dude name from Kansas? Blanking on dude name from Kansas. I got him. They got a lot of guys that I liked, um, and they cultured their way to beating the the Warriors. Moses Moody played well in that game against the Warriors. I mean, against the Heat, he did his thing. He had some shots, played defense, cleaned up some boards, things like that. So he played pretty well. Um, Jonathan Kaminga showed why. He, Warriors fans are going to love and hate him at the same time because he shows these flashes of what he can be. And other times he shows these things. It's just like, rah, relax. Just relax just a tad bit, bro. But the aggressiveness is what's going to make him successful. So you just got to stick with that. Hope everybody guides him the right way. And hopefully he contributes, man. Now, for the main event. Summer League. For the main event of Summer League, you got Vegas, baby. We got Vegas, baby. Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. Vegas Summer League is always fun. I'm going to go one day, and it's going to be epic because why wouldn't you want to go see Summer League live in Vegas in the summertime, you know? And let's start from day one, man. We had the Celtics and the, and the uh, Hawks. The Celtics got a dub. And standouts to me in that game, obviously Sharif, but not even just Sharif. I shouldn't have said Sharif first. Jalen Johnson, Jalen Johnson, twenty and ten in his first, his first action. I'm not gonna say in a real like a real game, because really technically you say that's a real game, but it's the first time we get to see him in an NBA uniform on the NBA floor, surrounded by NBA light uh, players. So it's gonna be interesting to see how he grows with the Hawks. I think he's in a good rotation, well, in a good spot because there's not a lot of pressure on him. He's not looked at to be the guy that's going to be the star. He's going to be a contributor, and hopefully he's able to star in his role for the Hawks. Um, Sharif. Sharif has really impressed me, bro. Like, 
why was he a second round pick again please t somebody tell me in the comments somebody tell me why Sharif was a second round pick please tell me table setter table setter vision ability to ball handle ball in the string get in the paint whenever he wants to the only things he really needs to work on are his shooting hey yesterday well, on Wednesday not on Wednesday on uh, Tuesday they played the Pacers 5 of 8 from 3 game winner you know what I'm saying schmagoogie <laughs> for the game schmagoogie for the game uh, so he's been he's been working on the jump shot the jumper as we work he's no longer going like this when he shoot he's just shooting up he's just shooting it <laughs> Um, I like what I seen from the Hawks, the Celtics. I like what I seen from their second year guys and their third year guys. Um, I'm glad to see Romeo Langford's healthy, bro. Romeo Langford is is a solid player. I'm glad to see that he's healthy. Uh, Peyton Pritchard's doing his thing. He dropped Sharif. <laughs> I'm gonna put the clip in there. He dropped Sharif. <laughs> he put. <laughs> he dropped him. I don't care if you say it's a pusher. He dropped him. He's been impressive. Um, Aaron. Oh. The, the PA and I just said Ness Smith. The commentators say Nee Smith. I don't know. I'm gonna say Ness Smith because it's like Ness Quick, <laughs> Ness Smith. Um, Aaron Ness Smith has been been impressive. Shoot the lights out. Been impressive so far. Um, who we got next? The the um, the Raptors and the Knicks. Scotty. Scotty had a good first game. Like I said, Scotty Scotty Barnes is my favorite prospect in this draft, just because. While he doesn't have an offensive bag, which would be to much of the chagrin of some of you guys, um, he has things that you can't teach. 7-3 wingspan, can't teach that. 1-2 on defense, you can't teach that. And just like his up here, bro, the brain. Like, you can always spot talent, but you can never spot well, not never spot. You can't just like short change what you got up here, because what you got up here is gonna operate everything else that you have, right? And the way Scotty is wired, he's gonna be special, bro. Like the communication on defense. Even if you listen to the wire for sound part, right, in their first game, talking to his teammates, like just telling them, oh, when you go here, I'm gonna be cutting, trying to get an easy basket. When he's coming off of this pick. We're going to trap that. We're going to do certain things. And he's communicating on the court. And he's loud. He's he's audacious. He's everything that you want him to be on the court, bro. Like, the only thing, he just doesn't have a bad on offense. He can't really shoot. Um, he needs to work on his touch around the rim. And he needs to hit his free throws. So, <laughs> he's a work in progress on offense. But defensively, and just like the mindset, bro. Like, the only reason why I'm not worried about the offense is just because of his mindset, bro. Like, he loves the game. He's thankful to be there. And yeah, bro, like for real, that's really what I'm, what I'm really, really impressed by by him. Um, you got the chance to see um, Emmanuel quickly go out there, and get some reps at, at the one, run the team, be the best player on the team, do his thing. Obi top and continue and to develop. You got a chance to see for the Knicks fans. You got a chance to see your guys, your your first and second round picks. You got to see. Q. Grimes, Quentin Grimes. You got a chance to see um, Brokus Jokobitis. You got a chance to see Miles McBride. You got a chance to see all your guys get out there, get some run. And they look pretty decent, man. They look pretty decent, dude. So, Quick shouldn't be out there on the Summer League court. But I get it. I understand it. I understand why he's out there. He's trying to get him some more reps. Get him used to being in that role of being a point guard. So, I like that. <laughs> and I have a list of guys that shouldn't be in the Summer League, but they're just out there anyway. Um, who else? Who else impressed me? Jalen Green. Jalen Green, buddy. What I say? Dyna dynamic score, bro. Dynastic player. Jalen Green is the ultimate dynastic player. Some nights you're gonna love him. Some nights you're gonna absolutely hate him. Early on, but Jalen Green is that dude, bro. And he's he's a man on a mission man on a mission and he's gonna be some of your guys' favorite player bro like he's got swag he's got the swag he's got boogie he's got bounce to the ounce and he's got that he's got that confidence like not just the fact that he has swag off the court when it comes to, like putting on clothes and just like the pushing the boundaries on the court kind of thing but he has like he has the ultimate confidence in himself and his ability and that's what i'm thinking propelled him especially him playing with the g league night 
the G League Ignite helped him. It's gonna it help Kaminga. It's gonna help Isaiah Todd. I haven't got a chance to see the Sixers play, but I know Tyrese Maxey did his thing. Um, I want to see Jaden Springer. I want to see Dacian Nix, too. Dacian Nix is the only other guy from G League Ignite that I haven't talked about. So I want to check it out, check out some of the Sixers game. I didn't get a chance to see those games, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tune in and watch them. So um, who else impressed me? The Hornets. Kai Jones. Outside of that monster. Ugh. Outside of that monster duck he had on Kenneth Free head top. Um, I was really impressed by his ball skills, bro. Like, his ability to handle the ball. I didn't know he had a handle like that. I thought he was just... I mean, I watched a few Texas games, but it's not like I was just like... Every game, like, you know, Kai Jones... I've seen Kai Jones, extreme athlete, track athlete, right? Track and field athlete. So, he's a great athlete. But... I didn't know he had such great ball skills. He had showed off the hand a little bit. He had some slick doms. I need to go back and watch their second game against the Kings. I watched the first game against the Blazers. And speaking of the Blazers, <laughs> speaking of the Blazers, their team is complete insanity. Complete and utter insanity. They have all, like, vets on their team outside of Greg Brown's third. Like, legit all vets. They got Mike Beasley. They got Emmanuel Moody and Kenneth Fareed. Um... They got somebody else on their team. I know they got Antonio Blakeney. Antonio Blakeney hooping. He's trying to get back in the league. He's trying to get back in the league. I hope he get back in the league because he had a rough year last year. He, I don't remember if it was last year or two years ago, but he was on the Bulls for in 2017, 2018. Um, G League Rookie of the Year. Had 30 points against the Lakers. Had a good year. Um, and after that, I think he got waived. He went over to China. He came back home. He went to jail for something. I don't remember what it was, but... Glad to see he's doing well. He's back hooping, trying to get back in the league. No his thing at 27 against the Hornets. And I know I'm a bit all over the place, but back to the Hornets. Jello. I completely forgot about Jello. Um Jello, man, he played well against the Blazers. He shot the lights out. He was like five for seven, five for eight, five for six from three. Um 15 points, all threes. That's what he got. If he gets in the league, that's all he's that's all he's really gonna be able to do as of right now. Because while he is a good athlete to regular people standards, to NBA standards, he's not an outstanding athlete. I don't think he'll be able to be a really good defender or like a dynastic player that can put the ball on the floor. He'll just be able to get be able to be a guy that can shoot. I'm gonna rewatch. Once the summer league is over, I'm probably gonna watch some film on some guys and make some film breakdowns on some some of the players. Not just like the top guys, but the guys like Jello and and guys like that that I really am intrigued by. So yeah man, um what else happened? Cade. The fade for Cade sweepstakes went to the to the Detroit Pistons. <clears throat> And while I am very high on Jalen Green, K. Cunningham is the he is the prototype of what you want in your franchise player. Like a ball a guy that's dynastic with the ball in his hands as a ball handler. While Jalen Green is a dynastic scorer, he's not as good as a ball handler of K as K. He doesn't have the same vision and things like that. That's what he's gonna have to work on. But Cade has not the same scoring ability as Jalen Green, not the same dynastic explosive scoring game, but don't get twisted. K get buckets. K get buckets, bro. He really get he get down and boogie. K get down and boogie. Um, he can pass the ball. He's a leader. He's a solid defender. He's like everything. He's like the fail proof guy in this draft. Because just because Jalen Green had two good summer league games doesn't mean he can't go down a cliff or some some other crazy something happens. Um, but yeah, K really impressed. Um, Jalen Suggs impressed. I'm all over the place with this. Don't mind me. Uh, if I don't speak on somebody, put put whoever I missed down in the comments below. Um, Jalen Suggs impressed me a lot. He's very versatile, versatile guard. Um, he can put the ball in the hole a little bit. Not in the way, not in the traditional way, but like cleanup guy. Um he 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 was impressive, bro. I'm gonna have to do a deep dive on him sooner or later. I've been I've been lacking on that. And heartbroken, bro. Josh Giddy got hurt. He's not sprained ankle. Second play of the game. When they played the played the Pistons, he blew by, got a dunk on the first play. Like, hey, let's get it. Let's get it, Josh Giddy. We finna you know what I'm saying, we finna hoop. But unfortunately he got his foot stepped on, sprained his ankle. Just to be safe, he's probably not gonna play anymore in assemblage which actually sucks. Um 
who else we talking about? Oh, damn. Uh, Alperin Shingun. Josh Christopher for the Rockets. Alperin Shingun was impressive, bro. Mad impressive, bro. Alperin Shingun was super duper impressive. Like, crazy. He was crazy. His footwork was elite. His aggressiveness to be able to get to the line was 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 of note. His even though he's not the best athlete, he had some nice he had a nice little punch. He caught a lot of punch down. You know what I'm saying? He punched it. Um he had a few good blocks, good rotations, and he's gonna be he's gonna be really good. Like just he's gonna be good. He's gonna be solid for a long time. And Josh Christopher, J Gut, man, besides the swag. Cause like the swag on the Houston Rockets might be unmatched, bro. Might be unmatched between KPJ, Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, John Wall, Christian Wood. Just besides those, like besides the swag, Josh is really like, like I said, dog. He's a dog. He is a high energy guy. Just when you're watching Josh Christopher, don't think of him as the high school star that you've seen. Um, high school, but he still has some of that in him, you know, because everybody has that in him. But really, really, what you need to be looking for from him is the defense, like the steal he got on Cade in your mid, in your mid, long arms out defense, everything like that, showing his athleticism, getting out and running, being a guy of that nature, like a Josh Hart or a. Uh, Marcus Smart type of player. That kind of player is what is probably going to keep him around for a long time. And he really impressed me, dog. Um, I'm looking at my list right now. Um, Chris Duarte. I'm sorry, bro. In my draft video, I kind of disrespected the Pacers a little bit because, I mean, the Pacers were a little bit in the wind. Like, they were... In that, that area that you really don't want to be in when it comes to being like the NBA teams, like they were in the, kind of like the similar situation to the Wizards before they got Russ for real, for real, just existing, not being too bad to get like a dynastic, all like an all grabbing guy. But I'm sorry, they have a good team, they have guys like. Why am I blanking on the, on the guys that they have on their team? Um, Karis LeVert, Malcolm Brogdon, Miles Turner, Sabonis. Um, and they brought in Chris Duarte, man. Chris Duarte been hooping. Hooping, hooping. Hooping. Bucket getter. And he got that mentality that he want to lock you up on defense, too. I love it. Love it. I love it. Um, who else really impressed me? Trey Murphy. Rookie Trey Murphy. Trey, you hooping, bro? Keep it up. Shoot, he L and L, bro. Locked and loaded from the Trey. Locked and loaded from the Trey mm. every time. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And and that really leads me into like the the not the Hornets, not the Hornets. The um the Pelicans lead me into the guys that I think shouldn't be in summer league. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with my DMV guys. Shout out to the DMV guys. You know what I'm saying? We putting on. They putting on for the for the for the county. They putting on for the tri-state area. And I know it's not tri-state because DC is not a state, but still they putting on for the tri-state. You feel me? You got my boy Sadiq, Sadiq Bay. You got Najee Marshall. Them two dudes shouldn't be playing in summer league. Najee Marshall going super hard. Going super duper hard. He going crazy. Stupid. He's going stupid hard. Uh, Sadiq Bay is just like silky smooth, too strong for you. Got got uh, uh, uh. he got that he got the uh, uh, uh for you. He got the nice he got the silky smooth jumper, and he's strong too. And he'll put the uh, hammer on you too. Same thing with Najee. Najee got that dynastic game, bro. Today when they played the Thunder, he. Get, <laughs> Najee got loose on one play. I don't remember who was guarding him. Hit him with a mean left to right. Ugh. Mean left to right. Got to the lane. Straight heaved on somebody. Um, yeah, I'm gushing over the DMV because, hey, man, that's our guys. They putting on for us. Um, who else? Kyra Lewis shouldn't be. Kyra Lewis shouldn't be in summer league for the for the Pelicans. Kyra Lewis shouldn't be out there. Kyra Lewis is really good. I think he's his role is gonna get expanded now with Lonzo gone, and I believe in Kyra Lewis, man. I believe in him. He's a good point guard. He's 
ultra quick, makes good decisions, and he's just young, bro. Cheaper than Lonzo, too. <laughs> Cheaper than Lonzo. And Devontae Graham. Oh, damn. Why did I hit on that? Devontae Graham. Devontae Graham is on the Hornets now. Not the Hornets. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Devontae Graham is on the Pelicans. I keep getting the Pelicans and the Hornets mixed up because, you know, their history is, like, crazy. Um, He's on the Pelicans now, bro. Like, he's going to fit in well with that team because they need shooting. They ain't had no shooting, like, consistent shooting. I know Lonzo's sample size last year was decent, but I think the – so if you – in a shooting contest, who you taking? You taking Devontae Graham or you taking Lonzo Ball? Tell me. I'm taking Devontae Graham. Um, so he's going to be able to bring that to the team. And I think Kyra Lewis is going to fit in that guard rotation too with Tomas Sadoransky as well. So I like what the Pelicans did. I'm going to be watching you Pelicans. Be watching you. I'm going to be watching the hell out of y'all. Uh, oh, damn. I forgot about this trade too. I'm messing up. Um, Jonas Valanciunas. And um, he's going to the he's going to the Pelicans. The Grizzlies traded him to the Pelicans for Stephen Adams and um, Eric Bledsoe. They're gonna probably get rid of them for the tenth pick. They got Zaire. I still need to watch um, some of the Grizzlies games in Vegas to see what Zaire is on. Cause Zaire, I believe in Zaire, man. He's one of my sleeper dudes. Even though he went top ten, ain't nobody really, you know, what I'm saying looking for him, but. Zaire is going to be good. He's going to be good for the Grizzlies for a while. He can shoot the hell out of the ball. He's a scorer. He's a bucket getter. And that's what they, that's what the Grizzlies need. They need bucket getters. Um, now I'm, I got to get back on point. Patrick Williams. Pat. Pat in his bag. That's another thing I like about Summer League a lot. Is just like seeing the expansion of games from other players. Other players like just expansions. Like just expand your game. Just guys like him, you got Isaac Okoro having the ball in their hands, being able to just be able to do things that they're not able to do when they're with the t- when in the regular season because that's not their role on the team. But being able to grow in that role and become better players. So in a pinch, if say for instance, and you know Patrick Williams is not going to be having the ball in his hands for a long time on the Bulls team, especially when you got Zach Levine, Demar Derozan, Lonzo Ball. Vucevic, he's not gonna have the ball in his hands a lot. But if you put the ball in, if you give him the reps in summer league, and he's gaining confidence from being able to handle the ball and doing what he's doing out there, he is hooping out there. He's getting his shit off out there. <laughs> he's getting his shit off out there. And if he's able to get those reps off and have the confidence to be able to do it in the summer league and carry it over to the regular season, when he gets the ball in those pinch situations where the clock is running down, he catch it on the wing, Ugh, pump fake, rip to the rim, boom on you, or catch pump fake swing to the other corner just being able to have me used to having the ball in your hands and being able to make decisions that's really going to help guys like him Isaac Okoro and players like that and yeah man Patrick Patrick Williams been hooping his little tail off who else is on my list um I already hit on uh, Desmond Bain Desmond Bain is a grown man Desmond Bain is a grown man and Tyrese Maxey Maxi, Tyrese Maxi is one of my favorite guys. If you didn't know, now you know. I'm a Kentucky, I'm a Kentucky fan, bro. Kentucky guy. That's why my shave video was so special to me. If you haven't seen the shave video, go watch the shave video, man. Um, the shave video, like shave, is special to me, bro. Like just watching a girl from Kentucky, watching a girl from Kentucky, watching Tyrese Maxi's girl from Kentucky. Emmanuel quickly shouldn't be in summer league. Watching his girl from Kentucky. Like, from his freshman year, he was a disappointment his freshman year, man. He wasn't hooping for real, man. With Tyler Hero and P.J. Washington, he wasn't hooping, bro. He didn't have a really spot like that, but he got better. He stepped up. He got his confidence. Another another DMV guy, you know? Another DMV guy. You feel me? Um, he stepped his game up. Look at what he doing now. Um, just being able to be those type of guys, bro. Like, you know? Tyrese Maxey been hooping, bro. I have, like I said, I haven't watched the game. I seen the stats, but I'm pretty sure he's hooping because in the playoffs he was getting his thing. He was getting the ball rolling. He was hooping, and yeah, dog. I'm excited to see what else summer league has in store. Evan Mobley's been hooping too. I'm, I'm all over the place. This is my first time doing this, like having a video this long, uh, longest. It's been going on for a long time. Um, and I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Um, but Evan Mobley's been 
he's been doing his stuff. This too. Evan Moby tonight. They played the Magic. That game was fun. That was probably my, my favorite game of the day. Outside of the, the sudden death game. I didn't watch that whole game, but I watched the parts of it. Because I was locked in on that other game. You know, And I was catching up on some of the other games. Like the Knicks and the uh, Pacers game. And some of the other games from earlier this week. That I still need to catch up on. Catch up on a lot of them tomorrow. And yeah. Uh, Evan Mobley really impressed. Like I said, he's got shooting touch. That shooting touch is amazing. His feel for the game is amazing. He showed off his playmaking ability and his shooting touch. The only thing right now he doesn't have that's going to take a while for him to work on is his, his, his stature. His lower body strength isn't there right now. It's not going to be there for a while. But, like I said, but, um, he's going to be he's gonna be a good guy for a long time. He's going to be a special player. Like a franchise level player. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. But, um, yeah, that's all I got. I spilled my entire brain out to you guys. So, if you made it this far, in the comments, tell me what you think about the video. And what's, what am I going to get y'all to say in the comments? Um, tell me what kind of pillows these are. These aren't the real version. I'm not rich. I'm, I'm not rich. That's why they're not large. Tell me what kind of what kind of replica pillows these are. And if you if you tell me what kind of fries these are. Uh, uh, get that out of there. Get that out of there. Um, other than that, man, thanks for getting cozy with your boy Don, man. We finna roll out. My phone been buzzing for a little second now. So um, I hope everybody has a great day. Enjoy this podcast style video. I'll be back with more to ramble about. And I'm um, sending a superstar video coming out this weekend. <laughs> Catch y'all guys later. Stay cozy.